Jones came home to Houston with a hugely enhanced reputation. No longer just the tycoon, he was now an intimate of the president, which made him a player on the national stage. His future was wide open. Roaring Twenties. Like the nation at large, Houston was booming. Jesse Jones was in the middle of it all. He owned the leading newspaper, one of the largest banks, and the grandest hotels in town. He owned the most ornate picture palaces and a huge portion of the city's downtown office space. One booster said Jones Buildings placed one on top of another, would reach two miles into the sky. Mary Gibbs Jones finally got her divorce. Jesse and Mary's wedding was a small affair, and her first marriage was never spoken of again. Though they'd have no children of their own, Mary and Jesse would raise Mary's granddaughter, Audrey Louise, like the child they never had. The newlyweds soon went to New York City. Jesse developed 12 buildings there and became the top financial officer in the Democratic Party. Then he pulled off a coup that astounded everyone. It was time for the Democratic National Committee to choose a city for the party's 1928 convention. And Jesse Jones saw his chance. To outbid the big northern cities, he wrote out a blank check and handed it to the committee. Fill her in for whatever it takes, he said. On behalf of Houston and the entire state of Texas, I extend you a most cordial invitation to hold the Democratic National Convention in Houston. The people are skeptical, obviously, to go to a, a kind of a frontier city in the heat of June with, with not much air conditioning. But they believe in Jones. They're persuaded by Jones's energy, his, his optimism to say, yes, this can be done. Bringing the convention to a southern city for the first time since the Civil War would elevate Houston and the South with one bold move. There will be no North and no South, no East and no West. Just one for all and all for one for the Democrats in 1928. It was one thing to write a huge check. The trouble was Jones also promised a convention hall to seat 25,000 people. And it had to be built in less than six months. He worked around the clock with his architects to finish the building. The failure would reflect not just on Jones, but on the whole South. When the time came, the hall was ready, but the visitors soon discovered something they hadn't expected. The delegates uh, are stunned at the heat steaming up from Houston in June, and the convention hall itself, of course, is not air conditioned. Apparently, it's like sitting in an oven listening to political speeches for hours at a time. Massachusetts, just 36 votes for Governor Smith. The convention's nominee would be Al Smith of New York, who went on to lose resoundingly to Herbert Hoover. But the convention was clearly a victory for Houston and for Jesse Jones. I think he created a different image for the South in national politics by portraying the South as the future uh, uh, of America, not necessarily just simply that a painful past uh, in our history. Meanwhile, Jones continued to develop his city. In 1929, he completed what he considered his crowning achievement, a 35-story Art Deco skyscraper to be home to Gulf Oil and Jones National Bank of Commerce. When the building opened, it seemed the good times would never end.
One month later, the stock market crashed, the decade's economic house of cards collapsed, and a downward spiral of devastation began that seemingly could not be stopped. First time in two decades, Jesse Jones stopped building. Instead, at age 55, he took on a new job, helping rebuild the nation's economy from the ashes of the Great Depression. Saving the banks of Texas had taken three days. Rescuing the entire country would be a different story. By 1932, the country was really in a desperate condition. A fifth of the labor force were out of work. People were living in Hoovervilles, so-called. People were starving to death. There was no system of federal relief. People began to talk about revolution. And there was a very, very scary time and a very desperate time. In 1932, Republican President Herbert Hoover appealed to Jesse Jones to bring his business skills to Washington. Though a Democrat, Jones was sworn in by the Republican administration to serve on a new federal agency called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. The RFC was supposed to make government loans to troubled banks and railroads in hopes of reviving the economy. But President Hoover was afraid to use the RFC. He saw it as a dangerous intrusion by government into business. The Hoover RFC was very limited. All it could do was to loan money to financial institutions. Uh, when Congress in 1932 tried to extend this to make it possible for the RFC to make loans to municipalities and states and entrepreneurs, Hoover angrily vetoed that as state socialism or state capitalism. From his first days at the RFC, Jesse Jones was desperate to do more. He knew the RFC's potential was being squandered, that if Hoover used it aggressively, the nation's economic catastrophe could be averted. Jones would soon get his chance to show what the RFC could do. I shall ask the Congress for the one remaining instrument to meet the crisis, broad executive power to wage a war against the emergency as great as the power that would be given to me if we were in fact invaded by a foreign foe. When President Franklin Roosevelt took office in March of 1933, he boldly promised to try anything and everything to defeat the Depression. Thousands of new government employees streamed into Washington to carry out his experiment in government called the New Deal. We got there as young people out to save the country. And there was nothing else we talked about. It was almost a religion. We were dedicated day and night to resolving the economic problems of the Depression and putting America back on its feet. Though Jones did not consider himself a new dealer, he gave his full support for Roosevelt's agenda. He lobbied the new president, spelling out what the RFC could do. And Roosevelt recognized that Jones' close ties to the financial world would be crucial to his success. 